Hello, how are you doing? Craig here at Flooded, and there's some good news on the horizon following on from a series of spin off shows where Star Wars uh, had decided that, you know, all the characters we saw sort of like in the background, like the extras in the background, all those like background characters, they now all have their own shows. It's always good when you give extras shows uh, of their own. Um, I've been following uh, everything that's happening with Star Wars. I'm an avid fan, uh, although I think I'm not enough of a fan, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I, I think I would be classed as a normie. Um, loved Boba Fett, loved uh, Mandalorian, still do, and didn't like Obi-Wan Kenobi. I didn't like what they did with that. Particularly pleased with Mandalorian at the moment. I know a lot of people aren't. Uh, particularly with the site, the scene with Jack Black in it. My my thoughts on that briefly are: uh, when you see the characters walking into that room and it's like a a, a dinner table full of eccentric-looking creatures and species from the Star Wars world, and then you have these two ridiculous characters, uh, the Duchess and the King. Um, it is uh, or the Duke, I guess he is. Um, you kind of think oh my, my, my immediate thought was uh mad hatter mad hatter's tea party these people are insane this is a bonkers society ever since we had the hitchhikers styled uh warning as you entered their realm that uh their ship was going to be locked on and in the name of democracy we're actually going to force you to behave a certain way uh i love that idea that um that that is seen as democratic <laughs> and that everything's democratic uh, but it's actually an authoritarian society and i love that plus there was like the silliness of uh so you know we had so we had oh but the important thing was i thought with that party was that the characters mandalorian as he went in there there was that reaction to these bizarre characters so i think that the the, the show itself recognized that these people look weird are dressed weird it's all weird so i think as long as you acknowledge that that it was recognized within the show it's not really it's not really um you know i i it's okay to think oh this looks rubbish because the show thinks it looks rubbish as well so that's what it's about for me it was kind of uh, very interesting i really enjoyed it droids in a bar or on same deal the characters like droids drinking in a bar that's stupid and then they go into a bar and it's brilliant it's like they all stop and look you know it's the you know the man with no name going into the saloon i love it it's kind of like so many things that have been so many levels and this was just a very simple level of it's funny why not and i i thought it was a nice homage to the droid world maybe we'll have a spin off that of just the droids because they've got a hell of a lot of them made now and it makes sense to let's do a droid show i wouldn't be surprised if we saw one sometime in the future anyway mandalorian aside uh, the news that broke yesterday at celebration in london was that they're going to be three three i said yeah three new star wars movies and that's extremely exciting news for the world because we all love a bit of star wars um so here's empire magazine talking about it three new movies confirmed at celebration including daisy ridley returning as ray now i think that one of the key things to think about is that daisy ridley had quite a tough time i think she was an unknown actor pretty much uh, and this was her big break uh, doing the Star Wars films. Um, and so she was obviously going to be an uncomplaining actor. Um, and she said after making the films that some days she was getting the script like on the day or um, she didn't know what was going to be happening the next day. So sometimes she didn't know why our character was doing whatever the character was doing. Um, and quite often the director didn't know either. So that is a disaster waiting to happen right there. Uh, and it was probably quite an uh, um, quite a tough experience for her as an actor to be able to get to grips with it. And she had to take the flat to a certain extent uh, after the film was made. I think she left Twitter. Uh, it has an impact on you when the world is attacking you online. Uh, and I think that she would not want to go through that again, which makes me think that she must have she must have sat down with them and said is this going to be as bad as it was before because i've seen how bad and i agree with the fans these films did not work as well as they should and could this is star wars for god's sake what are we doing uh so i imagine there's only way you're going to get her back in that seat is the guarantee that she's not going to go through that pain again and that people are just overwhelmingly going to love what, she, what, what we're doing 
or what they're doing with Star Wars. Um, either that or she was just offered such a ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> she said yes. Making, I'll, I'll do it for the flag. I don't mind. But she's back. And this is what's happening. They've announced three new films. The one film is going to be directed by James Mangold, who's famous for Logan and Indiana Jones. Dave Filoni, who we know has been overseeing the you know, Mandalorian. Uh, very popular with the fans. And then uh, Charmin Obed Chinoy, who I don't know much about at all or anything at all about, who, but uh, it says here helmed episodes of Miss Marvel. So uh, uh, the lesser experienced, I think, of the directors, perhaps. I don't know. Um, but let's see, see what happens. Now, Kennedy, um, uh, Kathleen Kennedy uh, said that they're working to this timeline, and I thought this was quite interesting. This is the timeline that they put up on the screen. Uh, you can see it there. But the first icon here says uh, Dawn of the Jedi. And then it's the Old Republic, the High Republic, Fall of the Jedi, Reign of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, uh, then the New Republic, and then the Rise of the First Order, and then the New Jedi Order. So it's kind of like the swings and roundabouts of storytelling, really. And that is the Dawn of the Jedi, to the new jedi order there's a lot of stories you can tell in a timeline that long because i think dawn of the jedi is like twenty-five thousand years before luke skywalker or something um so the films that are going to be made is mangold's film he's going to be going back exploring the first jedi to wield the force so i think this is a going to be like an epic biblical journey uh and i hope it is epic i hope it's like a 350 mil budget film and it's like really they really throw their their uh the money and the budget and very best actors and the um very best yeah i just think i really hope this is going to be the bedrock for all of the star wars films uh because it is the the birth of the force uh, and the discovery of the force and the, the force coming into existence it is going to be like um 10 commandments i think is what mangold said uh, and it's going to be absolute it has to be enormous it has to feel epic uh, and i hope and i think it will um because mangold's already realizing that he's already thinking you know cecil b demille and it's good and that is so exciting three hours long three and a half hours long lord of the rings scale of movie is what you want there um and then we've got uh Valoni, who's going to do a big screen adventure tying in with the mandalorian a cinematic event that's the term kennedy used i'm not really sure what that means i don't like that term uh, it seems a little bit pompous a little bit self-aware but um it sounds very corporate as well i don't like i just don't like it uh, that tells a vital part of the escalating war between the imperial remnant and the new republic it'll continue to flesh out the time between return of the jedi and force awakens i'm less excited about this but um uh, i don't know i don't really have much to say about that uh you know we're sort of getting a lot of that kind of thing in mandalorian now so let's just see what he does with it i think it's gonna be an extension of the mandalorian boba fett sort of world um we've we've seen a lot of these sets i don't know hopefully the thing is that once they start building film sets all the spin-off shows can borrow that and it's these these things just gonna get so epic and it's gonna become so much more affordable if all these things have already been built it's gonna be so interesting what they do and what's most important is get the storytelling right cast it right storytell right and as long as they crack that as long as they as long as they stop bowing down to identity politics and all that crap nobody's interested in um then just get on with making awesome stories about you know a film genre we love then we're absolutely we're laughing and they'll be laughing all the way to the bank um charmin obeyed Shinoi's film uh will take place at the furthest end of the star wars timeline moving 15 years beyond episode 9 the rise of skywalker which is uh, okay her film uh, set in an era described as the new jedi order this is the ray film by the way will be all about establishing a bountiful new age of force users in the wake of skywalker saga 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 um so this is the but, but i think this is building a future of a okay we george george's 
uh, stories are now behind us. Let's make our new Star Wars uh, world. The future Star Wars world is what this film is going to be setting up, I think. 15 years after the rise of Skywalker, it's kind of a reset. And it'll be interesting to see Rey in it. Um, are they going to age her? Or is it actually is she actually naturally 15 years older? I don't know. Probably is. No, I can't remember when Sky... That can't be 15 years, can it? Maybe it is. She's, um, she says her heart is pounding. Ridley stated as she took to the celebration stage. I think that's more to do with the fact she was being screamed at by a bunch of people dressed up as Star Wars characters. Um, so these films, uh, I don't know, planned for December 2025. I don't really think that's going to happen. I think it's more going to be 26, I would have thought. Uh, and the gap between them, I don't know. I'm, no, uh, I'm not very good at the strategizing of when films should be released. Uh, um, or really how long it takes to make them. I guess they can make these films relatively quickly now because they've got so much sets, so many sets, uh, whole teams of writers and everything all set up and in, in place and, you know, and tech, the technicians are all there and everything's already made and, and everyone knows about how to do Star Wars now. Uh, and maybe they can turn them over quite quickly. But it's all very exciting news and uh, I'm uh, going to be super positive about it. I know that some people are going to be like, oh, yeah, there we go. They're going to be people like that and i know that gets more clicks than positive videos but i am positive about it i'm excited about it i will be paying close attention to what these directors say and do um and uh i don't know what do you think let me know down in the comments if you don't uh do so already please like and subscribe uh until another time when i see you i will see you be seeing you all